Hello, and welcome to another short box from Warhammer 40K's Grim History from Beyond. I'm Zekthar, and this week we'll be talking about the Black Crusades, or as the Traitor Legions call them, the Long War. <clears throat> now last week we covered the few remaining crusades that Abaddon undertook before we hit the biggest one yet, the Twelfth Black Crusade, also known as the Gothic War. Now, like I've mentioned a few times before, Abaddon does not look at any of these crusades as losses, or even crusades. He looks at all of them as the Long War. He has spent thousands of years building his forces as well as weakening the Empire of Man around the Eye of Terror. Now, he needs a few more pieces to complete his army and give the Imperium a run for its money. This will require more than a simple raid, though. For what he needs is well guarded by mankind, and will require more force than he has ever used. Yet as I mentioned before, Abaddon is a wily general and leads his assault with guile and schemes before he brings the might of his army to bear. And so it was, in 139.M41, the Imperial Navy Scout Frigate Ascendance received a telepathic plea for help from the Ark Station's elderly astropath. The identity of the attackers was unknown, and when reinforcements arrived a full four months later, there was no sign of the raiders. Members of the 122nd Borland Regiment found the Imperial Guardsmen stationed on the planet had been wiped out and their bodies had been horribly mutilated and left to be devoured by the wild dogs that were Arx's only real predators. The Inquisition sent one of its agents, the experienced Inquisitor Horst, to Arx to investigate the matter, but there was little evidence left for him to sift through. If Arx had been the only outpost so attacked at this time, the raid would have become just Another unknown in a galaxy filled to the bursting with enigmas. Yet over the next three years, a number of similar attacks were reported throughout the neighboring star systems and then spread into the adjacent sectors. Inquisitor Horst suspected that some larger ploy against the Imperium was in motion. Yet he could find no evidence to support his well-honed instincts to identify the nature of the attackers. So he decided to watch and wait for this canny enemy of the Emperor to make its next move. In 140.M41, several Imperial patrol vessels made grisly discoveries in the Athena sector. A number of Imperial merchant ships and warships, one of them an Emperor-class battleship, were discovered to be drifting through the void uncontrolled. Upon being boarded, it was apparent that a great battle had taken place, with the crews of the ships slain to a man, yet no enemies were found. Inquisitor Hurst puzzled over these developments while his spies brought him more news. After much consideration, Horst became convinced that the forces of Chaos were planning another massive incursion against the Imperium, united as Chaos Undivided. The watch posts around the Cadian Gate were put on high alert, and the Imperial Navy warships from all over the Segmentum Obscurus were ordered to defend the space around Cadia. While Inquisitor Horst investigated the chaotic activity around Arx and its neighboring star systems, events turned even more sinister in the Gothic sector of the Segmentum Obscurus, 2,500 light years from Arx. The navigators in the Navis nobility report greater disturbances than usual within the warp of the Gothic sector, with the incidence of warp storms increasing as the year wore on. On many worlds in the sector, this news was received with panic, a situation made even more precarious by several religious fanatics declaring that the emperor was displeased and was sending warp storms to purge the sinful. A number of new hardline religious sects formed, their adherents stricken with feelings of impending apocalypse. They were desperate for the Emperor's forgiveness and began to demand that their friends and neighbors purge themselves of all the sins in the sight of the God Emperor. As the religious hysteria spread, lynch mobs roamed the hive cities and mining colonies alike seeking the impure. Impromptu burnings and hangs became a common as the desperately fearful citizens threw themselves into a fervor, scouring their friends and loved ones to atone for real or imagined sins against the Emperor. Yet all was to no avail as the warp continued to become more active. Under the cover of this widespread paranoia and religious excess, secret cults and covens insinuated themselves into positions of power, subverting even more people to their dark causes. Thousands, even millions of desperate imperial citizens were deluded by these false promises, flocking to these cults. While the Gothic sector was being engulfed in anarchy, religious strife, and confusion, Inquisitor Hurst was searching for more clues to the plans of the heretics. When he heard of the chaotic attack on the imperial world of Purgatory, he chose to accompany the investigating imperial fleet. There was one thing that made Purgatory different from the dozens of other chaotic raids in the region, the device known as the Hand of Darkness. 
Its existence was known only to a few of the most trusted members of the Inquisition. For the Hand of Darkness was an incredibly ancient alien artifact located deep beneath the planetary surface of Purgatory. All attempts by the Adeptus Mechanicus to discern its purpose had failed. Yet the legends of other, older races like the Eldar spoke of the Hand of Darkness with horror and revulsion. It was widely believed to be a weapon of immense power. When Hurst arrived on Purgatory, the Inquisitor's deepest fears had come true. The Hand of Darkness had been taken. If the followers of Chaos learned how to activate the alien weapon, they would be able to unleash incredible destruction upon the defenders of the Imperium. Hurst knew of another artifact connected to the Hand of Darkness and the old Xenos myths called the Eye of Night, and it was located in the rattling planet of Orn's world. As Horst sped towards the world on the fastest vessel he could commandeer, a report came in an astropathic message on the attack upon the Rattlings. The defenseless Rattlings stood no chance against the depraved Chaos Space Marines, and the death toll reached into the millions as the hills and mountains of the world were scoured with fire and shells by the most potent followers of the Dark Gods. Among the carnage, the Eye of Night was torn from its mounting, and the thief slipped away from the planet. The forces of chaos now possess both the Hand of Darkness and the Eye of Night, and thus the potential power to overthrow the Imperium of Man. Inquisitor Horst desired only to know where the forces of chaos would strike next. A solar month after Horst arrived in the Gothic sector in 142.m41, a cataclysmic shockwave passed through the warp. The resulting massive warp storm engulfed the Gothic sector in swirling tempests of warp energy cutting the sector off from trade or astropathic communications with the rest of the Imperium. The defenders of the Gothic sector would face the darkness that was to come utterly alone. It was at this time Abaddon made his move. And so it was. In 143.m41, the War Master of Chaos began his Twelfth Crusade, the largest assault from the eye the Imperium had ever seen. Massive waves of gunships, battle cruisers, and battleships swarmed the sector and caused trillions of deaths in their wake. Yet as the Imperium scrambled to hold their own, two deeply disturbing things happened. The first was a ship that the Black Legion controlled simply called the Planet Killer. It put its name to use when it arrived in orbit over Savavan. The massive vessel unleashed an energy beam from a number of ports on its surface that lasted for almost 30 minutes and cracked the very crust of the planet. The bolt bored its way through miles of the planet's crust and seared through the molten mantle beneath. As the attack finished, the magma surged forth through the continent's size wound the blast had made in the planet's crust, breaking Savavans apart from within. The oceans boiled, the ice caps melted, and whole continents sunk beneath the blazing tidal wave of molten rock vomiting forth. Savavan was blown out of its natural orbit by this titanic release of geothermal energy and eventually simply imploded into millions of rocky fragments. There were 14 billion people living on Savavan, all of whom died in less than a solar hour. The effect on Imperial morale of this new weapon unleashed by chaos was predictably devastating. All had heard of an order of exterminatus being carried out upon a world by the Inquisition, or by space marines using cyclonic fusion torpedoes, virus bombs, or mass drivers. But to know the enemy had the ability to destroy an entire planet from the inside out, not just all life upon its surface, was the most chilling thought that any Imperial crewman or soldier had ever faced. As the Imperial Navy reeled at this news, Inquisitor Horst was left wondering if this was the power that had been gained from the forces of chaos, possession of the Hand of Darkness and the Eye of Night. The second thing that was even more terrifying was Abaddon was acquiring the Blackstone Fortresses. Now, the Blackstone Fortresses, also known to the Eldari as the Talisman of Vol, is a massive alien-constructed star fort and warp-based strategic weapon employed by both the Imperium of Man and the forces of Chaos during some of their more recent conflicts. According to some Imperial scholars, the Blackstone Fortresses were constructed and first used during the war between the Old Ones and the Necrons remembered in the Eldari legend as the War in Heaven. The fortresses were equipped with a warp cannon that could create a devastating rip in the fabric of real space that would unleash an eruption of psychic energy from the Immaterium powerful enough to destroy entire star systems. 
this power can be linked with that of the other fortresses to create even more powerful beams. As Abaddon continued his bloody crusade, he continued to steal these fortresses of mass destruction, causing panic in the Imperium. It was at this time a true hero of man arrived, a Navy Admiral by the name of Cornelius von Ravensburg. After holding as much ground as he could during the years of the Gothic War, he came up with a simple conclusion. The best defense is a good offense. While he knew he would never survive an attack from Abaddon's whole fleet, that wasn't really the issue. You see, the War Master of Chaos had broken up his fleet in the usual Chaos Marine form, smaller armadas that were too big for single Imperial naval fleets. Yet if he could conglomerate enough of his forces, Ravenberg thought he could strike a decisive blow. He eventually got his battle of the Gethesame system, where he annihilated a Chaos Armada. While this was splendid news, better news came from the frontier. The warp storms had dampened and reinforcements had arrived. Now was the time to set a trap for the despoiler. Now at this point it was clear to everyone that Abaddon was shopping for blocked fortresses. And to set a trap, they could use one of these weapons of war as bait. The Admiral, through his vast network of intel, gained information that Abaddon was preparing to launch an attack on Schindelscheist, where Blackstone 5 floated in the depths of space. Leaving only a few vessels to deal with the other Chaos fleets, Ravensburg raced to reach Schwindelschweist before Abaddon. With his speedy actions, the Imperial Admiral sped across the sector and arrived five days before the spoiler was due to arrive in the area. The Imperial ships lay in wait of the Chaos fleet. When the traitor's ships finally arrived, they were outnumbered and caught by surprise, leaving them little choice but to die fighting. For three days, the two mighty fleets battled, inflicting horrendous casualties on both sides. But for all their ferocity, the Chaos ships simply could not match the forces arrayed against them. As the third day of fighting drew to its bloody conclusion, Abaddon once more broke the Blackstone fortresses through the Imperial defenses and headed towards the system's primary star. Ravensburg ordered all available ships to intercept them, though he knew there was little he could do to stop the behemoths. Only the Flame of Purity was close enough to attack, but the battlecruiser's weapons were woefully ineffective against the huge station. Linked again by powerful energy beams, the fortresses built up the required power for another cataclysmic attack. Seeing no other option, in a supreme act of valor and ultimate sacrifice, Captain Abridal ordered all power to the shields and drove the Flame of Purity into the middle of the converging energy waves. The ship was destroyed almost instantly. However, the detonation had expended the fortress's power, and, as a bridal had hoped, the Blackstone fortresses would take some time to accumulate the energy required for another attack. Luckily, time was something that Abaddon had finally run out of. The Blackstone fortresses had been rendered all but ineffective. Their power systems drained. Abaddon managed to escape into the warp with two of them, while the Imperial fleet closed in on the third, unleashing all of their weapons, although still to little effect. Finally, Two strike cruisers from the Angels of Redemption, combined with shark assault boats from the Divine Rite, boarded the isolated Blackstone in an attempt to recapture it. There was no crew aboard the fortress. The interior of the fortress bore little resemblance to what the Imperial forces recognized, and there was no sign at all of the modifications made by the tech priests, as if their intrusion had been totally expunged. The Imperials had been aboard for only an hour when a high-pitched whine filled the air, and the walls became reddish in color. The Imperials had no sooner left than, without warning, the fortress suddenly began to break apart and slowly shattered into a thousand fragments. At about the same time as the recaptured Blackstone fortresses destroyed itself, the other fortresses across the Gothic sector also self-destructed. But what became of the missing fortresses under Abaddon's control? That, my friends, is a story told in our next special bonus box, simply called Cadia. If you enjoyed this box, feel free to subscribe, comment, follow, and like. And if you really like our stuff, please join our membership squad on our YouTube channel, Tales of Asheraka. With your support, we can continue to build and grow our boxes, as well as some cool extra stuff for you guys to join. Once again, we need the support of you, our dear listeners, so we can continue to make a successful show that you all enjoy. If you're listening on Spotify, don't worry, you can help as well. If you click the support podcast button on any of the descriptions on Spotify, you can donate to our success too. Well, I think that's enough grandstanding for me today. I'll, I'll just go ahead and get off my soapbox and say as always, <clears throat> Until next time, this is Ekthal, signing off.